welcome back to Politics Unplugged. I want to talk about a rare front page editorial that ran in the Arizona Republic this week. The headline was Democracy is Under Attack. That editorial debunked the false claims about the 2020 election one by one. And then it concluded with this. Arizona voters can depend on the security and professional handling of those ballots. Those who would undermine our electoral system are lying for selfish reasons. Don't give in to them. Don't be demoralized. Your best response is both simple and profound. You vote. And I want to talk a little bit um, um, with, about that. It was a rare editorial. I want to get your comment on that. You were pretty outspoken about it a little bit, at yeah. least on Twitter, and get your con- reaction to it. I mean, I, th- I thought it was a great column. I think it was an important column. I do think it was very difficult for them to write this column without singling out the leading role that Carrie Lake and Mark Fincham and uh, Abe Hammett have all had in sort of pushing this lie forward. And I understand. I'm sure they had a good debate about it. I'm sure that they thought about it. But, you know, when it comes down to it, each of these candidates at the top of the ticket have not only said that they want to make changes in the future. Recently, they've said that they want to decertify the election. They would they want to seize power from the the lawfully elected president of the United States. And that's extremely dangerous. And the, this, the other thing I want to add that I think that we, we all agree on is aside from the politics and all that kind of stuff about it. Right. And this election is that there are. A significant number of public servants who are nonpartisan that work in elections that have left their jobs because they need to find a job that they feel safer in than running our elections. And that's because of the death threats and the attacks and and the lies that they have to put up with every day. And it's just too important. And get your reaction to it. You were yeah. just talking about being lectured by, uh, by yeah. folks about democracy. I mean, is this something that you think resonates with, uh, with voters out there? Do you think it's uh, more lecturing? It, it feels political. I mean, I'm one who believes that Stephen Richer, our county recorder, is a great guy, and mm-hmm. we're lucky to have him there. Um, I also think there are improvements. I'm for voter ID and all these other things that the left mm-hmm. is against. And I will tell you, I don't think this is what this election's about. This election, particularly for governor, is do you want higher or lower taxes? Do you want school choice or no school choice? What do you want the direction of the state to look like? And for me, it's pretty clear. I mean, yeah. there's a real contrast. I don't think the election is well, about I, this issue. I think issue. Republicans don't want the, the issue to be about these kinds of things. I don't want things. it to be about it, and I don't and, think it is. And, That's and, not and, how and, I'm we're, and we're going to find out. Yeah, and, and obviously that. But, and, you know, you, you can't ignore that it's still, it was a huge issue in the primary. It's still an issue today. Now, you know, you've got a Trump-endorsed candidates, a slate of them running the top of the ticket right now. Um, what's your thought on that? I mean, they've all, you know, dabbled in election denialism. Well, my thought on that is that it's not what people are voting on. It's great that the Republic wants to talk about this. I would like if they actually covered these campaigns, because I think there's a lot of issues out there, and I don't see any coverage anymore of the, the campaigns. Not to, talk, to sound like an old person, but when you and I were doing this, um, <laughs> the we days. actually went out and covered these races. And so to me, okay, this is fine, but there's big issues in this race, which is why there should be a debate. It's why we should have a discussion about them. And if the Democrats want to talk about this issue, go for it. Well, but we should also be talking about taxes and education and border security and all the big issues. Well, it's not just Democrats talking about this issue. There's Republicans nationally and locally who also really, really want our, this us to move on from these attacks. Like, it's dangerous. It's, it is bad for democracy. I don't care about the the whether or not this helps our candidates. Like, it really is legitimately an existential thing for us. It really is. Well, I think there's a lot of big issues. And I, again, I go back to, I don't understand how you can stand and say this is the end of democracy, yet we're not going to have civil discourse and debate between people well, who want to well, lead our state. Well, let, let's move on. Uh, you, let's, let's, let's show you um, a big endorsement this past week that really does harken back uh, you know, to the Trump administration, to the January 6th attacks. We're talking about Mike Pence, you know, came to Arizona and he made this endorsement of Blake Masters. Here, check this. Arizona and America need Blake Masters in a Republican majority in the United States Senate. Blake Masters may be the difference between a Democrat majority in the Senate and a Republican majority in the Senate. Now, we know that Blake Masters, I mean, really rode the Trump endorsement mm-hmm. uh, to victory in the primary. 
Um, you know, uh, we know that, you know, Donald Trump has pushed baseless claims of widespread election fraud. Um, and we also know that, you know, Donald Trump had blamed Mike Pence for in part for not, uh, you know, stopping the certification of the election there. Pretty amazing that, you know, Masters, who is a very strong supporter of the former president, would take the endorsement given the history between those two. What do you think it says? Well, I don't think it's surprising. I mean, look, th this goes back to what I'm saying. This there are a lot of issues. I mean, do you think Mike Pence wants a, a Democratic U.S. Senate? No. This, this race will determine the makeup of the United States Senate. And in which, what, are you, what is your thoughts on this? When you see Blake Masters standing next to Mike Pence on there, given the context here of what's I mean, going on. Blake Masters has contradicted himself time and again in this campaign. He's debating, you know, he's changing his positions. He's made strong attacks against anybody who, you know, did, you know, what, what your boss did and what, what the, vice, the former vice president did to sort of say, hey, look, this election is over. But he's willing to sort of stand up there and take it. You know, it's, it, it, it shows me, I think, that, that the, the sort of cornerstone of our democracy is a very, very important issue to me. And it just isn't. But you're to not going to vote for leaders. Republicans who believe that Biden won the election. You're, why do you I have been very Rep supportive of Republicans so you, this year. Who have who were willing to stand and up? And you're going to vote for them and endorse them? Come I, on, in a competitive race? I no. might, I might, because I, I I think that there are people like Richer and Bill Gates who have had the courage to stand up. Not when they were attacked. They didn't wait till they're attacked. They stood up and they said, "This is important." And I really do. And I've said on this show a bunch. I respect them for that, and I think that they deserve, you know, praise and support because of it. I. That's that's well, we'll that's have to me. come back on next election cycle. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll bring that back. See who hey, Tony's I do want to get this. Are. We got about a minute left here in this segment and then we got to get going. But I do want to talk a little bit about the Donald Trump subpoena of the January 6th. A committee has now subpoena him. Uh, I did just mention we do have a slate of candidates that are uh, Trump endorsed and back. Does this have any effect, any impact on the race moving forward? Uh, on on which one? On all the races here in, the, in Arizona. I mean, he's endorsed. Trump has endorsed uh, Kerry Lake. Uh, Secretary of State's race, Mark Fincham, he's endorsed Abe Hamaday and numerous other candidates. Does this affect the Arizona election at any, at any point in any way? Because once again, a lot of people talking about Donald Trump. I think these races are incredibly close, as we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. I think that they will be squeakers. I think every vote counts. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. people got to get out and talk about what it is they want to do to move the state forward. Oh, without a doubt. I think yeah. all of those statewide races now are just going to be, all of them are just, it's built in, it's going to be close. Right. I mean, I think now, I mean, when we were covering this together <laughs> way back in the day, you're not going to see a, a Shannon Napolitano blowout of Len Munson. Those days are long gone. Yeah. But uh, with people still talking about Donald Trump, him still being in the news, mm -hmm. could this have an effect in some of these you know, key uh, statewide races that, again, are could be squeakers? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really think so. It depends on how his biggest offenders react. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that, I think that they, they probably are being motivated by the sort of people on right wing social that they really cater to, to stand up and defend the president. And we'll see if they do it. I haven't seen it yet. I think that most people, um, you know, I think that it's very serious what happened, but I also think that most people have, I don't think anything new came out of the, the, the hearing yesterday that would change people's minds. All right, we're going to have to wrap it there. Thank you both for a lively discussion <laughs> on some Thanks. of the issues there. And still more to come, the push for criminal justice reform and the need to help people with a criminal conviction on their record to get a job.